Good evening. Tonight, we will talk about bail under Rule 114 of the Rules of Criminal Procedure. We will begin with Section 1, the definition of bail. Bail basically is a security given to guarantee the appearance of the accused before any court. So as a, uh, as a guarantee, as a security, bail has uh, many types or forms. It can either be in the form of a corporate security, property bond, cash deposit, or recognizance. So later on, we will talk about those different types or forms of bail. Bail is a constitutional right on the part of the accused under Article 3, Section 13 of the Constitution. It's very significant because under the Constitution, the right to bail shall not be impaired even when the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus is suspended. Also under the Constitution, it says that excessive bail shall not be required. So later on, we will go on to discuss the bail bond guide, the latest bail bond guide of the DOJ. I think it's the 2018 edition. Okay, so why would a person accused of committing an offense even have a right to bail, a constitutional right to bail in the first place? Well, it emanates from the presumption of innocence of all, of all the all the accused in any case in the Philippines, they are considered to be innocent until otherwise proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And because of that axiomatic starting point of innocence, of course they are not yet convicted, they are actually allowed to post bail. So the question is now asked, are all offenses bailable? The safe answer would be it depends, but you can actually even answer yes. Yes, even those offenses punishable with a capital punishment. Because um, in those cases, if the evidence of guilt is not strong, then the person, uh, then the accused, uh, who, is, uh, alleged, who allegedly committed a crime punishable with a capital offense, would now be uh, would now be entitled to bail actually as a matter of right anyway we would go to those uh, parts later on so that is section one that's the basic definition it is a security to guarantee the appearance it would not guarantee anything else it would not guarantee that the accused would not commit any other offense okay but it would at least guarantee the appearance of the accused during trial to be able to answer okay for the you know for the crime charged against him or her and of course to be able to defend himself or herself okay section two we have the conditions of bail and there are requirements the first requirement would be the undertaking any person applying for bail whatever form of bail it may be the four forms of bail would have to prepare or make an undertaking. And in this undertaking, it would have the following conditions. Number one, that the accused shall appear before the proper court when a required, whenever required by the court or the rules of court. And um, another condition would be, um, should the accused fail without any justification, to appear during trial despite due notice, then that would be considered a, or deemed a waiver on his part to be present on at the said trial. This is what we call trial in absentia. Of course, I have to tell you in advance or to remind you that when we say trial in ab uh, absentia, this is actually when the accused was already arraigned. Okay? Because if the accused is not yet arraigned, um, you, the court cannot hold trial. The court can only hold trial when the accused is already 
arraign. Now, if after arraignment, the accused now would escape, for example, or flee, then the case would actually proceed, the trial would proceed, and that's called trial in absentia. Okay, another condition for the bail undertaking would be that the bondsman shall surrender the accused to the court for execution of final judgment. So later on, when we, especially uh, in the form of corporate uh, surety, we would uh, discuss no, under the reliance versus amante case, the, uh, the duties of the surety. Okay, so... In, uh, there's a paragraph there in the last paragraph of section two. It says that, um, of course, in the undertaking, uh, the, the documents to be submitted to the court would state should state the full name and address of the accused. Of course, it would also be very useful on the part of the court. Pag sinabing full name, usually it would contain the middle name. And in uh, some of the courts that I am aware of, uh, they are very particular with the name of the accused. Yeah, so usually it would be Juan de la Cruz y Hernandez to uh, state that Hernandez would be the middle name. Also, um, some courts are very particular that they are, would even want to include the appellation or the name by which the accused is known. Eh, ito yung tinatawag na aka, also known as. It's just you know, just you know, just to be able because this is bail this uh, so you know the, the court should have full information baka pag tumakas kasi yung accused tapos mahirap pa lang mahirap hanapin kung hindi tama yung pangalan na binigay at kung hindi po tapos kailangan may pictures din na uh, ano ba to pictures um, passport size na taken within the last uh, six months. So in my experience, uh, pag pumupunta na sa korte yung akusado, ang nangyayari, doon mismo, anyway, sa mga cellphone naman ngayon, yung mga court personnel, kinukunan na yung accused ng picture. Tapos, you know, using the court, ano na rin, resources. So from the cellphone of the court personnel na nagpa-process, then i-upload or i-download nyo sa computer ng court, Tapos using the printer of the court. And uh, of course, it has it would have to be colored printer no? para makita yung picture no? yung no accused. Okay. Actually, in uh, it's not really indicated here in Section 2, pero uh, in, all, in all the courts that I know of, no? pinagpapiano din ng accused. So, meron din mga fingerprints. So, kasama din yun sa profile we call that the accused profile na laging naka-attach with uh, naka-attach sa uh, kahit anong undertaking for the bill section 3 it's just a simple statement na no person shall be released from detention or transferred from one detention place to another without any court order or without any bail it's quite basic. Although, I think I've heard of, um, because of the COVID scenario, I've heard of um, some, uh, I think, some BGMP um, facilities that they would actually transfer. I mean, kung kailangan ng quarantine for 14 days sa Facility A, then ladalin sa Facility B. I think they do inform the court, no? They do inform the courts. Uh, na tina-transfer. Nabawa, uh, dapat dito muna sa facility A, pero dahil um, parang suspected COVID siya, dadanin muna siya sa B after 14 days bago siya ibabalik sa A. So, I think that's, you know, they inform the courts, but I'm not so sure whether the courts would even strictly follow Section 3 to issue, whether to issue an order or not, no? dun sa mga transfer-transfer na namin. Okay. We now go to actually the heart no? uh, Rule 114 and that is Section 4 where bail is a matter of right. In the, in the case of uh, first uh, level courts, it's quite easy. Okay? Um, in, the, um, in the case of first level courts, 
whether kasimula ng kaso, whether during trial, whether um, after conviction, even even after conviction, but the first level court, bail is always a matter of right. So walang problema, hindi siya masyadong mahirap tandaan for first level courts. Now, pagdating sa RTC, meron ding bail as a matter of right. But this is before conviction. This is before conviction. So we will see that um, pag after conviction, then may complexity na ngayon napapasok and um, yung bail, hindi na siya as a matter of right on the part of the accused. Okay? Magiging as a matter of discretion na siya under the next section, which is section 5. Now, what if the offense is punishable by death, reclusion perpetua, or life imprisonment? Is bail a matter of right? No. Is bail a matter of discretion? Well, it depends on uh, whether the evidence of guilt is strong as may be you know, proved during the bail hearing. Actually, pag mahina yung um, during the bail hearing, nag bail hearing tayo primarily for those uh, cases na ang penalty death, reclusion perpetua, or life imprisonment. So may bail hearing yun. The very purpose of which is just to give the prosecution the chance to prove that the evidence of guilt on the part of the accused is strong. Okay? So may bail hearing. So hindi, again, hindi siya problema ng first level courts, problema siya ng RTC. Okay? At syempre, kung hindi strong yung evidence of guilt, magtutuloy-tuloy pa rin yung kaso, pero yun nga lang, may entitled na yun to bail yung uh, accused. Okay. So, in Section 5, uh, bail were discretionary. Now, sa RTC, basta na-convict ka na sa RTC, of course, Pag na-convict ka, lahat naman ng conviction, beyond reasonable doubt, di ba? So, pag na-convict ka na sa RTC stage, um, yung, ano mo, bail mo, na mo, for example, uh, sa first level, kanyari, unjust vexation lang siya, uh, na-convict ka, nag-appeal ka sa RTC, sa RTC, convicted ka pa rin, Ang mangyayari doon, yung bail na final mo mula first uh, level court, mawawala na yun, mapapaso na yun. So, kailangan mo mag-file ulit ng panibagong bail. Pag na-convict ka ulit, or convicted ka pa rin sa RTC level. Okay? So, um, kaya lang, in that case kasi, it's already discretionary on the part of the RTC. Kung bibigyan ka ba, kung bibigyan ka ba ng bail o hindi. Para question is, where do you file? Bawa, convicted ka pa rin sa RTC. If you file your notice of appeal, but you know na hindi pa napo-forward yung case sa uh, taas, sa uh, Court of Appeals, then pwede kang mag-file dun sa RTC. Pero kung dun ka sa taas, pero kung, na, syempre kung na-forward na yung record sa CA, syempre sa CA ka na magpa-file kasi sa CA na yung magre-resolve na. Now, kung CA, um, what if um, meron kang original case filed with the RTC, for example, um, economic sabotage na illegal recruitment. So, ano yun, no? Diba? Hindi available yun, no? Originally, no, hindi siya available. So, ano mangyayari? If you are convicted, um, syempre beyond reasonable doubt yon. Ibig sabihin, the evidence of guilt is already strong. Diba? Convicted ka. So, hindi ka na pwedeng mag-file ng bail. And that is the case of Leviste versus Court of Appeals. Okay? 
So uh, I just want to direct your attention to uh, Section 5. And in Section 5, in the third paragraph, you have what you call the bail negating circumstances. And we will just, uh, just go over these circumstances. If the penalty imposed by the trial court exceeds six years, meaning if it's six years, one day, and one day pataas, kailangan may bantayan yung court. Kasi nga, kailangan, kasi pwede kang mag-apply mag for bail, no? For temporary freedom or liberty, ano, ano, temporarily. So, ang mangyayari, the court would have to determine, actually, it's basically the duty of the prosecution, kailangan alert sila to prove na or kung malaman nila na yung accused pala ay recidivist, quasi-recidivist, habitual delinquent, or yung crime is aggravated by the circumstance of reiteration. So, syempre hindi na igagrant ng court yung bail. Dumalabas, and if I just may, if I would just call your attention to uh, section 5, tapos meron dung A, B, C, D, E. So, these are the bail negating circumstances. In effect, pag present yung A, B, C, D, and E under Section 5, actually, in effect, it's no longer discretionary upon the court to grant bail. Why? Why? Because the fact na may presence nitong bail negating circumstances nito, itong five circumstances nito under A, B, C, D, and E, the court basically has no discretion. Basically, it has no choice but to deny the application for bail. Okay? Now, is this listing A, B, C, D, and E exclusive? No. Under Section 5, it is not exclusive because in the third paragraph of Section 5, it says that of the following, yun nga yung A to E, or other similar circumstances. So, yung, dun sa similar circumstances, pwedeng pumasok pa yung discretion ng court. Pero dun sa A, B, C, D, and E, basta na patunayan siya ng prosecution that these matters, these circumstances are actually present. Okay? Then, that would negate the discretion of the court to even grant bail. Kasi nga, it negates, no? The, the right to bail in the first place. So I would, uh, there's no need, I think, for me to discuss with you the difference between a recidivist, a quasi-recidivist, a habitual delinquent, or uh, a crime aggravated by the circumstance of reiteration. Okay, okay. it's just, uh, you just look those things up, uh, found in the device penal code. Okay, meron lang isang circumstance under the bay in the bay the five bail negating circumstance. Um, the first one yung nga, the recidivist, quasi recidivist, etc. The second one is um, the accused previously escaped from legal confinement or has evaded sentence. Na sentence na siya pero siguro nag trial in absentia, nag may so may sentence siya, talagang na evade niya, no? All, all throughout. So, pag ganun, yun yan, hindi ka na pwede mag-bail. Or violated the conditions of his bail without justification. So, nakapag-bail na siya ng una, pero violate niya yung undertaking. So, hindi na pwede yun. So, it actually it negates the right to bail. As long as the penalty is more than six years. Um... It's uh, in in uh, the the third circumstance would be uh, yung offense na commit nung accused while he was on under probation, parole, or conditional pardon. For example, naka probation na siya for an earlier case. Tapos ngayon habang naka probation siya, nag commit na naman, nag commit siya ng crime of theft, for example. So yun ay habang nagpo probation na siya nun, na under rehabilitation na siya nun supposedly. So again, it negates na. No? the right to bail. Siyempre, importante din sa bail din yung, ano, yung, yung pagiging flight risk nung accused. Kung talagang medyo may kaya to at maraming connection at madaling tumakas, eh, well, it's a bail negating circumstance. Actually, 
basta flight risk ka it's it, it basically disqualifies you no from um, from applying for bail because one of the conditions of bail basically and this is also a condition doon sa mga magpapapiyansa do sa mga may piyansa door no yung may mga corporate surety hindi ka dapat lumabas ng Pilipinas habang dinidinig yung yung kaso mo hindi ka pwedeng lumabas ng Pilipinas because if the court would have an inkling that you know your flight risk definitely hindi no grant in bail okay um Under Section 6, there's a definition of a capital offense. Pag sinabing capital offense, punishable with death. Although under RA 9346, makikita natin na uh, uh, the imposition of the penalty of death is prohibited. So, it's actually yung death penalty, I mean yung penalty of death, it's still in our statute books. However, the imposition of uh, the, that particular penalty of death under RA 9346 is prohibited. So, so hindi tinanggal, in, in effect, hindi tinanggal yung death penalty sa Pilipinas in the sense na binura siya sa mga batas natin. Yung imposition lang niya, yung pinagbawal. Okay? So, anong gagawin kung hindi death? So, yung reclusion perpetua na lang ang ipapalit without eligibility of parole is imposed. or um, life imprisonment as the case may be whether it depends whether the penalty or the crime is under the revised penal code or uses a nomenclature penalty nomenclature of the revised pen, penal code or if it's under special penal laws okay So again, ang general rule natin, pag death, life imprisonment, preclusion perpetua, no bail. No bail. Except when evidence, ah, except when evidence of guilt is not strong, regardless of the state of criminal prosecution. Okay? So ganun ka-importante, again, yung bail hearing. That's why we go back to our original statement na, Actually, lahat naman talaga ng offenses na yan, bailable. But for those punished, punishable with death, reclusion perpetua, and life imprisonment, kailangan talaga. Mapatunayan mo na ng prosecution, evidence of guilt is strong. Otherwise, yun nga. Ulit-ulit tayo, but, but just to emphasize, pwedeng mag-avail ng bail. No? Anyway, later on, we will go to the invalid. Okay. In the case of Envile versus Sandigan Bayan, well, ang kinonsider talaga ng Supreme Court dito yung edad ni Envile at yung kanyang, yung fragile state ng health niya. So, syempre kung plan there, hindi naman talaga siya available in effect. Pero, dahil hindi naman talaga flight risk, at hindi naman talaga tataka si Envile. Plus, his actually personal history na Kahit yung mga kaso niya nung araw, hinarap niya yun at nagpakita siya at hindi siya tumakbo. So, kinonsider lahat ng Supreme Court yun. No? At uh, ginrant sa kanya yung kanyang right to bail. No? Even though, supposedly, non-bailable yung case niya. Okay? So, what are the cases, uh, examples of non-bailable uh, offenses? Yung parricide, kidnapping and serious illeg uh, illegal detention, uh, qualified bribery. Okay? Um, kudeta siyempre yung um, plunder uh, kidnapping to and failure to return in minor in similar cases okay now in section 8 who has the burden of proof in the bail application it is the prosecution which has the burden of showing that the evidence of guilt is strong. It is the burden of the prosecution. 
That's why they should be given enough time and notice to prepare for that bail hearing so then, so that they can marshal their evidence and present that during the bail hearing. Okay? And, um, of course, you produce evidence, no? So both parties, no, both sides, no? The prosecution and the accused would present their respective evidence. Of course. So whatever they produce there, syempre bail hearing pa lang naman yun. Diba? So bail hearing pa lang yun. Automatically, kung ano yung na-produce doon, auto automatically deemed uh, reproduced at the trial. Although uh, the the witnesses presented during the bail hearing can actually be recalled to the witness stand and testify on other or additional matters no? during the trial itself. So, yun lang talaga, no? Um, again, ganun kasi kalakas yung presumption of innocence na ang burden talaga ng prosecution, well, in this case, dalawa. Number one, to prove that the evidence of guilt is strong for purposes of denying the application for bail in offenses punishable by punishable by death, reclusion perpetua, or life imprisonment. And of course, at the end of the day, um, duty and burden of prosecution is actually to um, prove the guilt of the accused beyond a reasonable doubt. No. Kailan ba nangyayari itong bail na to? Itong bail hearing na to? It happens after the arraignment and the pre-trial. Under the continuous trial guidelines, sabay na kasing nangyayari ang arraignment and pre-trial. So after arraignment, pre-trial agad. Then kung may application for, um, for kung may petition for bail, then it's heard by the court no, in a summary hearing after arraignment and pre-trial. So, barang stack, you stack it up, no? Arraignment, pre-trial, tapos you hear the petition for bail to be resolved within 30 calendar days. So, the court should resolve it. Or in drugs cases, 20 calendar days. Pwede ka rin mag-file kung hindi ginrant yung bail. Pwede ka rin mag-file ng motion for reconsideration. Actually, kung talo ka pa rin doon, you can actually file a petition for certiorari under Rule 65. If it's at the RPC, you file an a Rule 65 sa Court of Appeals. Okay? Now, we go to the amount of bail. And there, you know, we have guidelines. Actually, it's it's quite easy nowadays because we have, uh, we, we usually refer to the 2018 DOJ Bail Bond Guide. So, hanapin nyo na lang yun. So, nandun nakalista kung magkano yung mga babayad, yung mga piyansa, no, na dapat, yung amount ng bail na dapat bayar. Okay? So, usually the courts naman, uh, wala naman akong, hindi ako aware ng court na hindi talaga sinusunod yun. So, basically, sinusunod nila yun. But that doesn't mean that the court cannot impose its own, you know, cannot, you know, add bawa Kung 3,000 lang, for example, yung mabababaw na kaso, yung pinakamababaw na kaso. Diba? Kung tingin ng court, medyo salbahi yung pagkakagawa ng mababaw na kaso niya, for example, it's like physical injuries. So, I mean, depende sa evaluation ng court, no? especially during preliminary examination, once the case is raffled to that court or filed, no? as the case may be. Then, the court can actually, it's a guide naman, eh, yung sa DOJ. It's a guide. So, it also guides the prosecutors kung ano yung i-recommend nila na amount na bail. Okay? As a rule kasi, lahat na application for bail dapat hinihiring. Pero may exception. Hindi na kailangan ihiring. Yung mga hindi ano, hindi life, reclusion perpetua, and life imprisonment. Pag hindi siya, halimbawa, mababaw na kaso lang, no? punishable with arresto mayor, for example, mga less serious physical injuries. Um, pwede siyang, pag nag-apply for bail, pwede siyang i-hearing ng korte. Or, pwedeng hinga na lang para wag na lang mag-hearing, pwede na lang 
tingnan ng court ng recommendation yung prosecution. Magkano ba yung bail recommended? Pag meron na nun, kahit hindi na mag-hearing, at least no, alam ng court yung sense, no, yung sense ng prosecution. Representing the people of the Philippines na, okay, this is your sense na, this is your bail recommended. So, okay. So, enough na yun. Plus the fact nga na in first level courts nga, lahat yan, uh, bail is a matter of right before and after conviction. Okay. Now, in the in section 9, you have the amount of bail and you have the guidelines. So, again, it's just uh, the different, you know, number one, of course, is financial ability. Of course, the nature and the circumstance of the offense, the age and the health of the accused, the character and the reputation of the accused. Actually, important itong letter D no, sa section 9. That's why in courts, pag ang tao nag-apply ng bail, humihingi na rin yung korte na yon ng um, certification from the Office of the Clerk of Court. Both of the RTC and the first level courts, so dalawang OCC, hihinga niya ng certification, titingnan din yung kanyang history. Ng, uh, yung kanyang history, kung maraming reklamo sa kanya, for example, merong isang accused na pabalik-balik na lang sa korte for theft. Talagang laging, I mean, magnanakaw lagi. So, siyempre, meron sa DOJ bail bond guide, depende sa amount na ninakaw. So, nakalagay, nakaplastar doon kung ano yung amount ng bail, no? Yung bail recommended. Pero pag makita ng court na, hey, teka lang, pang, pang ilan niya na to, di ba? Usual, o kaya nangyari, lagi siyang nagnanakaw, pero dahil naareglo, laging, laging nadidismiss, for example or hindi nagiging interesado yung parties so na dismiss yung case for ano no for violation of the right of the accused to speedy trial etc etc so pero pabalik dahil siguro namimihasa yung akusado na anyway alam niya na tuwing magnanakaw siya at mahuli siya maaareglo naman yan di ba dahil ayaw ng mga tao maabala so ginagawa niya nang paulit-ulit pag ganun taasan mo na yung bail Todo muna kasi siyempre yun nga eh. Nakalagay nga doon. Actually, it's in the rules of court, no? Section 9, paragraph D, character and reputation of the appeal. Okay? So marami pang ibang factors, no? But uh, I, guess, I guess those are the more important ones. In section 10, we have a definition of corporate surety. Well, ano lang naman yan? Bonding company lang yan. Kahit sinong company na pwedeng mag-issue ng bonds, no? Nang, usually these are um, para maging bonded ka in a sense, ha? yung ibig sabihin ng bond. So usually these are, these are insurance companies. Kahit domestic or foreign corporation, Basta authorized, accredited, and recognized by the Office of the Court Administrator. Yun ang Section 10. Okay? We go to Section 11. I personally have not yet experienced this na may post ng property bond. Okay? So we read Sections 11 and 12 together. Pag sinabing property bond, well, basically, hindi talaga siya... Anong property yung... Binabanggit dito yung refrigerator mo, yung lumang piano ng lola mo, di ba? Yung TV nyo, ano yung, ano yung property na sinasabi dito? Ano yung property na pwedeng gamitin as a bail, no? Well, it's basically real property. Okay? It's real estate. That's why... Pag na-approve yung bond na yan, yung property bond na yan, at convinced yung court that the value of the property is enough to cover the amount the amount required for the bail. So, i-approve ng court yan. Pero within 10 days, kailangan ma-register na siya sa registry, sa register of deeds. Kung registrado siya. Actually, kahit hindi naman siya uh, registered, hindi registered walang TCP, OCP, Sa RD pa rin, no? sa ROD, pa rin naman din siya pinaparin. Pag hindi yun nagawa, ika-cancel yung previously approved na 
property bond. And of course, syempre, pag wala ka ng bond, pag wala kang piyansa, ang gagawin, mag-issue ng warrant of arrest for your re-arrest and detention. Okay? So, ganun lang ha. Basta yung property bond. Ngayon, pwede bang pagsama-sama yung property bond kung maliit lang yung value ng property tapos more than one property yung gagamitin as bail po ito. Now, under Section 13, and you read that also with Sections 11 and 12, no? every surety should actually execute an affidavit. Uh, in that affidavit, you describe the property. to be given as security. So, you state the nature of the title, its encumbrances. Yung encumbrances, ito yung, ang bawa, yung lupa pala na ginagamit mo pang bail dun sa isang tao, sa akusado, nakasanglahan na pala sa banko. At hindi, pa, at hindi pa fully paid sa banko. So, the court should actually know, kaya kailangan niya ng affidavit. Eh. And of, of course, all the attachments, no, para ma-evaluate ng court kung i-grant or i-deny ba based on that property bond. Kasi nga, baka nga may sabit, no? Or, iba, maraming encumbrance yung lupa, no? Maraming adverse claim dun sa property na yun na syempre mapapadalawang isip din yung korte, di ba? Kung tama ba siya as pro yung property na yun gamitin as, uh, as uh, bill, no? For the abuse. Okay. So, uh, in section 14, it's only one section actually, no? It's deposit of cash as bail. So we call this cash deposit no, under Section 1. Uh, ito, yung, uh, ito yung pangatlo, cash deposit. Pwede kang magbayad under the rules of court sa so Section 14. Pwede kang magbayad sa municipal or city or provincial treasurer actually. Tapos yung evidence lang ng deposit mo, certificate of deposit, ipakita mo sa court pag if file mo na sa court. But uh, I think the more expeditious way to do it is actually to sa court ka na rin magbayad. In single sala courts, doon ka mismo magbabayad sa court na yun. Kasi wala siyang branch. I mean, wala, hindi siya multi-sala. Single sala siya. So, doon ka magbabayad. So, yung clerk of court, nung single sala court na yun, siya na rin yung tatanggap ng pera, siya yung mag-issue ng resibo, Siya na yung mag-prepare ng documents. Tapos yung judge ng court na yun, yung mag-issue ng release order mo. Pagbayad ka na ng cash. Okay? Ano yung... Well, pero kung hindi nga available yung court or for some reason, pwede ka naman magbayad sa, sa BIR, pwede ka magbayad sa treasurer, sa municipal, city, or provincial treasurer. Na pala, ano yung advantage pag nagbayad ka ng cash bill? cash deposit as bail. Well, pag nag-dismiss yung kaso mo, pag nag-dismiss yung kaso mo, pwede kang, pwedeng ibalik sa iyo yung cash. Pwedeng ibalik sa iyo yung cash. So, yung cash na binigay mo, pag ba o na-dismiss yung kaso sa iyo, whether provisional or permanent, kasama na doon sa order of dismissal ng case usually nakalagay na doon, ordering the cancel no of uh, the the cash bond kina cancel na siya tapos i-release na siya back to the person who paid that cash bond hindi tulad ng sa surety yung mga dumadaan sa piyansador di ba nga insurance siya so insurance nagbabayad ka ng premium so yung maliit na amount na binayad mo as premium di ba hindi na yung Alangan. Pero pag cash, yon lahat yon the entire thing na no, ibabalik sa inyo. Okay. Ano nga pala isang feature ng uh, cash deposit no as bail? It shall be applied to the payment of fine and costs. Halimbawa sa kung ikaw naman ay na-convict, nakalagay doon costs against the accused, for example. So, kung ano man yung costs na meron na incur, ibabawas yun dun sa bail, na, sa cash deposit na pinay. 
na binayad mo. Pero sa cash deposit lang siya pwedeng mangyari. Okay? Now, we go to recognizance. Recognizance, recognizance. It's important for us at this point to consider Republic Act 10389. So, it's just, it's for your own good. Just read the whole thing, no? Just read the uh, entire RA. Um, the cons my concern about this type of recognizance, it's actually you know, very elaborate. If you ask me, it's quite laborious also. Kasi under RA 10389, well, basically, this is what happens. Yung sanggunian, yung sod or bayan, talagang may involved. At kailangan nila mag-issue ng resolution to be signed by the mayor, to be approved by the mayor, para lang talagang mag you know, you know, mag-take effect yung uh, recognizance as bail. So medyo maraming prosesong pagdadaanan. At yun nga, idadamay mo pa yung sanggunian at kailangan tang may resolution. Okay? So, actually, I haven't experienced this yet, no? Yung ganitong klaseng recognizance. Although may ibang recognizance ako na na-experience. And um, this is the type of recognizance. Anyway, I'll just say this, no? Once the accused has served the minimum period of the penalty for the crime for which he was accused committing. Yung one-third. So, yung minimum, maybe yung maximum. So, yung one-third nun, yung minimum. Pag na-serve niya na yun, pwede siyang pakawalan actually on his own recognizance. Siyempre, pag na-serve niya na yung buo, siyempre, pakakawalan talaga siya without prejudice to the continuation of the trial. Pero, meron tayong rule na Pag meron, na-serve niya yung one-third o yung minimum period, kakawalan siya on his own recognizance. So, hindi na tayo dadaan tuon sa elaborate process ng RA-10389. Okay? Of course, in this, in this law, we also have to take note of Section 12. There is no release on recognizance after final judgment or commencement of sentence. So, pag may finality na yung judgment or nasimulan mo nang iserve yung sentence mo, diba, hindi ka na pwedeng i-release on recognizance. Actually, ganun naman talaga lahat eh. Basta naging final and executory na yung case or naging final na yung case, wala ka ng remedy kundi mo avail yung remedy mo before it, the decision convicting you becomes final. So, dapat hab habang hindi pa siya final, within that 15-day window after promulgation, convicting you, avail mo na rem remedies mo. Pag hindi mo avail sorry na lang. Kahit appeal pa yan, kahit uh, yun nga probation, kahit uh, kung anumang bail yan, hindi na talaga pwede. So, yun yung general rule. So, Look out, no? Look out for that. Okay, so um, in section 16, bail is, when is bail not required? Well, pag nag-file kasi ng case for reckless imprudence resulting in damage to property, Basically kasi, pag damage to property, fine lang siya. Wala siya tam, I mean, as a penalty, fine siya. Wala siyang kulong per se. No? Of course, except kung hindi mo niyo mabayaran yung fine, magkakaroon ng subsidiary imprisonment. Pero yun nga, yung penalty ng really damage to property, fine. So, pag ganun, um, well, some courts would still issue a warrant. Pero some courts would not issue a warrant. Tapos yung mga, yung mga kaso under summary procedure, hindi rin siya ini-issuehan ng warrant. Ah. At syempre, pag hindi siya ini ng warrant, wala rin siyang bail. Okay? Except kung, 
kung hindi ka talaga umaaten o hindi ka mahalihagilap, then iisuan ka ng warrant. Pero ang tawag doon, bench warrant. Kasi hindi ka nalang talaga mahagilap. Okay? Pero pag na, pero sa simula pa nung kaso, narapol sa korte, merong probable cause determination, e summary procedure, summary proceedings. So, wala pa rin warrant yun. Diba? Bibigyan ka lang ng notice of arraignment and pre-trial or preliminary conference. Okay? Tapos pag na-receive mo, kung hindi kumatay ng arraignment or preliminary ng arraignment, baka isuan ka na nga ng warrant. Okay? So again, pag walang warrant, walang bail. Okay? Except kung warrantless arrest yan, of course, you, have, you can pay for your bail. You know, pwede kang mag, uh, mag-put up ng bail. Actually, makikita din natin yan sa Rule 112, di ba, na pag may warrantless arrest. Tapos, you want to avail of preliminary investigation. Kasi actually, pag warrantless arrest, i-inquest ka. Pag na-inquest ka, hindi na kailangan mag-PI, dire-diretso na yan. Di ba? Eh, gusto mo mag-PI pa rin kahit na-inquest ka na sa warrantless arrest mo. Iwi-wave mo ngayon yung Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code. Iwi-wave mo yun, di ba? Tapos, mag-PI ka na. Pero during that period, sabi sa Rule 112, may karapatan ka pa rin mag-piansa. Okay? Just as a review sa ating Rule 112. Okay. So that's section 16. Doon din yung sinasabi ko na one-third period na yung minimum nasa rules, nasa section 16. Ka. Okay. So saan ba pinafile yung bail? Well, syempre kung sino yung court na nag-issue ng warrant, doon ka rin magpapiansa. I mean, it just follows, no? What if the judge is on leave, no? That time na ikaw ay pupunta doon upang magpiansa, kung on leave yung judge, ano mangyari? You get a certification from the branch clerk or the personnel of that court na wala si judge para makapagpiansa ka sa iba. Usually, this is the job of the executive judge. Okay? Ganito yan eh. Pwede kang mag-file ng piansa kahit wala pang arraignment. Pwede kang mag-file ng piyansa kahit hindi pa nararaffle yung case to any specific court. Kung hindi pa siya nararaffle to any specific court, syempre ipa-file mo siya sa office of the executive judge. Okay? Pag nararaffle na siya at doon ka palang mag- magbabayad or magpa-file ng piyansa, then doon ka na sa court kung saan nararaffle. Especially if that court Nung una, hindi ka pa nakakulong. Kunyari, hindi warrantless arrest. Kunyari. Walang warrantless arrest na nangyari. So, kunyari, estafa. So, nag-determine uh, yung court na yon na mayroong probable cause upon preliminary examination. Tapos, inisuhan ka ng warrant. So, that time, punta ka dun sa court na yun. Nung ka magbabayad ng piyansa. Again, let me just emphasize, ang bayad po ng piyansa sa korte. Sa korte po. At sa korte, at sa korte lang po. Okay? Although pwede kayo magbayad sa municipal treasurer or sa BIR, pwede po yun, ha? Pero ang advisable po talaga, kung saan court na lang po talaga nag-issue ng warrant or nakafile yung kaso, whichever the case may be. Diba? Doon na lang kayo pumunta at doon na lang din kayo magbayad ng piyansa nyo kung cash bond or doon nyo na lang din i-file yung inyong ano, surety bond. Doon po kayo pupunta sa korte. Anyway, ang mga multi-sala courts po, meron silang office of the clerk of court, may OCC sila na magpo-process nito. Or kung single sala sila na court, then the judge and the staff would be competent no to take care of those things also. So, diretso, yun na lang. Basta may nakarinig ka na na may warrant against you, punta ka na kagad sa court, i-verify mo kung may warrant against you. Diba? Magtanong-tanong ka, i-verify mo. Saan ba narapol yan? Kung nalaman mo kung saan narapol, punta ka dun sa court na yun. Kung saan narapol, diretso, tanong mo, may warrant po ba ako? Narinig ko po, may chismis. May, pero wala akong preliminary investigation. BP-22, hindi ko alam na may kasong final against me. Nananahimik ako dito. May 
Pero naichismis sa akin parang may warat na, eh di, bayad ka na, di ba? Or mag, magpiansa ka na, no? mag-bail ka na, whichever form of bail is, uh, is available to you. Doon mismo sa court na yun. Okay? Pero kung wala ka ng pambayad, maghahanap pa talaga ng piansador. Usually, yung mga piansador na yan sa experience ko, yung mga opisina nila, nasa tapat din ng Hall of Justice. So, kadalasan, sa tapat ng Hall of Justice, kahit saan lugar to sa Pilipinas, ha? sa totoo lang, I've been to many places. <laughs> kahit sa kali- mga liblib, magugulat ka. Andiyan yung korte, di ba? Makikita mo, dun lang sa vicinity na yon merong notary public, may mga abogado na nag-offer siyempre ng kanilang legal services. Tapos, ayun nga, may mga piyansador din dun sa mga area nyo. So, ingat lang din kayo sa piyansador ha, kasi kailangan accredited ng Office of the Court Administrator. Tsaka number two, I mean, I have to mention this. Minsan mag din kayo magpapaloko sa mga piyansador. Hindi naman lahat si Raulo ha. Maraming matino, maraming nakakatulong sa akusado. Andun tayo. Talaga natutunungan na yung akusado. Makapag-file ng bail, makapag uh, apply for bail through corporate surety, for, through surety bond. Pero, meron kasing mga unscrupulous na walang kaalam-alam yung accused. Tapos, um, so lumapit siya sa piyansador. Pero meron pala siyang pang cash bond. So yung cash bond niya, binabayad niya sa piyansador. Hindi tama yun. Pag, may, pag meron kang pera at kaya mong bayaran yung buong amount nun, i-cash bond mo, diretso ka na sa court. Ngayon kung malaki-laking amount niyan, kunyari 30,000 pesos yung ano mo, piyansa mo, hindi mo kaya bayaran ng cash, doon ka pupunta sa piyansador. Babayaran mo yung parang insurance premium. Hindi mo 30,000 ang babayaran mo. Diba? Yung premium lang, then, yun na. Yung uh, piyansa doon mo na yung bahala. Or tumulong sa yung mag-process mo. Okay? Again, ha, hindi binabayad yung cash bond sa piyansa door. Pag hiningi yan ng piyansa door, wag na wag niyong ibibigay. Okay? So, 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 that's section 17. Ini-emphasize ko lang, ha? Sa court, pinafile yung bail. Pag cash bond siya, sa court din at hindi sa piyansador, hindi siya pinafile sa police station, hindi siya binabayad sa abogado, hindi siya binabayad sa kung anong mang konso pilato. Okay? I cannot emphasize it enough kasi. May mga nangyayari din kasi sa paligid na hindi rin tama. Okay. Now, Paano nga kung death penalty, etc., etc., di ba non-bailable? So, kailangan may, tas nag-apply ka pa rin for bail. So, of course, the prosecutor under Section 18 should be notified in order to afford the prosecution the opportunity to marshal his evidence, to prove that the evidence of your guilt is strong, that you would not be entitled to bail. Okay? Section 19 is about a release on bail. Sino lang ang pwede mag-release? Again, ang pwede lang mag-release ng kahit sino mang akusado ang court. Ang pwede lang mag-utos din ng commitment and transfer of the accused, court lang din. Okay? Now, what if, ito, ita, may experience ako nito. So, yung case na dito sa isang lugar, nasa X, no? nasa City X, Pero yung mga akusado na huli sa ibang isla ng Pilipinas, nasa City Y. Diba? So, doon sila, magpa- sila nahuli sa kabilang isla, sa City Y. Doon sila, siyempre, pupunta pa ba sila sa City X? Siyempre, sa City Y na sila pupunta. Dahil doon sila nahuli. At doon sila, kasi yung, yung warat umiikot yan sa buong Pilipinas, by the way. No? So, Ang waran galing sa City X, pero umikot sa buong Pilipinas, doon sila nahuli sa City Y sa kabilang isla. So doon sila, siyempre hindi na sila pupunta sa City X. Sa City Y, lalo na ngayong COVID, sa City Y sila, doon sila magpa-file ng piyansa nila. Pero pag na-approve yung piyansa at na-release sila ng court sa City Y, 
kailangan i-forward at i-transmit naman ng CTY, ng court sa CTY, yung documents doon sa CTX. Para yung CTX, ma-schedule niya na yung arrangement. Okay? Kasi nahuli na eh. So, pwede nang mag-arrangement. Okay. So that is section 19. Section 20, increase or reduction of bear. Yun nga. Again, just look at the many, many factors. Lalo na kung flight risk or kung medyo salbahe talaga siya or may history talaga siya. You know, it can be increased or reduced. Paano kung may set ng previous bail? Pwede bang at some later time, the court would just say na, okay, we will either increase or reduce the amount of the bail. The court can actually do it. Okay? Section 21 is very important. And this is about the forfeiture of bond, and this is the case of reliance versus amante. This section 21 is applicable pag surety bond yung form of bail no, na finile no, nung akusado. Ang mangyayari dito, yung insurance company, yung piyansador, the fact na sila yung piyansador, sila yung um, surety, Sila yung, sila ngayon yung magbibigay ng kasiguraduhan sa korte na lilitaw at lilitaw tong akusado na to tuwing may hearing or tuwing ire-require ng court. Especially kung required yung presence niya for identification. Halimbawa, prosecution yung mag uh, trial tapos prosecution witness. Kailangan ituro ng witness in open court. Siya yung accused, siya yung nakita kung gumawa niya, ganyan ganyan siya yan. Diba? So kailangan talaga present yung accused that time. Diba? Para ma-identify siya ng prosecution witness. Karapatan din naman ng prosecution yun. Na maging available yung accused para ma-identify siya ng prosecution witness or ng complainant mismo. Diba? So kung surety bond siya, ang duty niya, i-ensure niya na every time may hearing, sumipot yan. Bakit? Pag hindi sumipot yan, gagana yung section 21. Ano yung process na to? Ano yung steps under Section 21? Pag hindi nagpakita yung accused at notified siya at required siyang magpakita for that hearing, di ba? Ano mangyayari? Yung bond niya, yung bond niya, yung bond niya, ikakancel, ipo forfeit. So kung ano man yung surety bond na meron siya, to guarantee his appearance and to give him provisional liberty, temporary freedom, lahat is scrap na ng court yun. Ah, hindi ka nagpakita. Ah, pa. Notified ka. Parang unjustifiable naman yung, no, yung absence mo. Pa. Yung surety ban mo, cancel yun. Ganun, ganun lang ba yun? Hindi. Kasi nga may extra duty yung surety. So, ang gagawin ng court, ire-require niya naman yung bondsman na yung surety company, i-require niya, number one, within 30 days, to produce the body of the accused. At kung hindi nila ma-produce, at least to give a reason kung bakit hindi nila ma-produce. And number two, to explain in writing, bakit hindi nagpakita in the first place yung accused during that hearing. Pag hindi yun nagawa within 30 days ng surety company, the court will actually render judgment. Alam niyo render judgment, di ba? Para may decision, Magre-render na siya ng judgment. So maglalabas ng order, magdidictate ng order yung judge. Anong gagawin ng judge? Yung kung ano man yung amount ng bond, ng surety bond, na kinansel niya, yung amount na yun, kunyari 30,000 pesos, yun naman, uh, maglalabas ngayon ng judgment ng yung court against that surety. As in judgment, na pwedeng i-execute ng sheriff, executable. Actually, may alam akong ganyang nangyari. Medyo walang kakwenta-kwenta talaga yung surety company. So talagang, Kulang na lang i-contempt ng court. So, hindi na lang ginanahan yung court i-contempt. Talagang walang ginawa, walang ginawa. Lahat to sa Section 21, wala silang pake. 
eh dumating yung time na ano for reaccreditation sila ng OCA. Ah, di ngayon. Ah, di, hindi nila gusto pero kung walang yang surety company na to, napilit ang magbayad. <laughs> napilit ang magbayad. Kasi hindi maririnig yung accreditation nila, paano naman yung negosyo nila? So, minsan ganun, magmama- parang wala silang pakilang kahit anong matanggap nila from the court or na ganito, gawin nyo to. Hindi na talaga na gagawin passive, parang wala silang narinig, parang walang respeto sa court. Yun. Hindi ko nila lahat ha, pero may mga iilan kasi na talagang medyo salbahe. So, yun. So, syempre, nalagasan sila ng 30,000 ba in that case? Nalagasan sila ng pera. Diba? Kasi yun nga eh, kung maayos lang nilang ginagawa yung trabaho nila, na ini-insure nila, minomonitor nila lahat ng alaga nila. Diba? At, at i-assure nila na lahat yan natin ng hearing. Kasi ganun na, basta may surety bond, ang or may duty yung surety company. Okay? Huwag muna mag-issue ng warrant of arrest. Kailangan bigyan niya muna ng trabaho yung surety company. Hanapin mo naman yan. Diba? At produce mo within 30 days at explain mo in writing but hindi siya nagpakita in the first place. Diba? Kasi yung ibang korte, they skip that part. Kahit na surety bond, diba? parang hindi na lang nila inuobliga yung surety company to do its job. Okay, basta ang ginagawa nila, kinakancel nila or kinuforfeit nila yung bond, tapos issue sila ng warrant. Tapos yung surety company natutulog sa kangkungan ng ginagawa. Diba? Pag sa, sa section 21, pagtrabahuhin mo muna yung surety company. Anyway, yun naman talaga kasi yung trabaho nila. Sila yung magbibigay at mag-guarantee na magpapakita yung accused each and every time na kailangan siya magpapakita. Okay, that's section 21. Section 22, cancellation of bail. Pwede namang i-cancel ng bail. Sino yung magpapakancel ng bail? Siyempre, yung surety company, yung bondsman. O kung sino man yung nagbayad ng cash bond. Kung cash bond yan at hindi yung akusado ng bayad, ibang tao nagbayad, baka ka mag-anak niya. Diba? So actually, pag yung, yung kamag-anak na nagbayad ng cash deposit, hindi to surety company, ha? cash nga to eh. So kailangan um, bawa na matay na yung accused or yung accused, nag-decide na lang talaga mag-surrender na magpakulong na lang, which is very unlikely if you ask me. Yun. Pwede naman i-cancel yung bail. Nakakancel din yung bail upon the dismissal of the case or the execution of the judgment of conviction. Halimbawa, na-dismiss yung case, whether permanent, yung sinabi ko kanina, or provisional, kinakancel yung bail. Tapos nire-release to the payor. Paano naman kung convicted ka? Magbe-bail ka pa ba? Well, pag yan ay naging yung decision, convicting yun, naging final and executory, wala na, wala nang bail-bail yan. Wala ka ng remedy kasi final na yun. Diba? Okay. Section 23. Um, paano kung yung mga surety company gusto nilang uh, puntunin yung kanilang mga alaga <laughs> at uh, gusto nilang hulihin. Pwede nilang hulihin. Actually, sa Amerika, uso to yung mga bounty hunter kung tawagin. Hindi uh, lang masyado uso sa Pilipinas yan. Or, pwede naman silang humingi ng police assistance yung mga surety company. That's section 23. Section 24, yung kakasabi ko lang kanina. Kung may judgment of conviction, okay, pwede kang mag-file ng bail hanggat hindi pa final. So, as a matter of right sa section 4 sa MTC, and as a matter of discretion sa RTC, except those punishable with um, death, reclusion perpetua, and um, life imprisonment. I just want to um, emphasize also, iba na filan ka na plan there, for example. Uh, Sandigan ba yan? Malaking amount talaga. Hindi ka so, non-bailable yun. Sa simula. So, mag-bail hearing kayo after the arraignment and the preliminary or the pre-trial conference, then mag-bail hearing kayo, di ba? Then 30 days or 20 days as the case may be to resolve. Di ba? 
So, kunyari, nakapag-bail hearing ka. Tapos, yung evidence of guilt, not strong. So, kahit plunder, nakalaya ka on bail. So, habang dinidinig yung, yung kaso mo sa Sandigan Bayan, di ba? Malaya ka, hindi ka nakakalaboso, di ba? So, that's really okay. That's really okay. Paano kung sa huli na convict ka? So, sa simula, sa bail hearing, hindi ganun ka-strong evidence. Pero sa tinakbo-takbo ng kaso, sa huli, sabi na sa Sandigan Bayan, well, guilty ka, plunder. Convicted ka. Pwede ka pa bang mag-file ng, ano? ng bail? Siyempre, hindi na. Bakit? The fact that you are already convicted beyond reasonable doubt, di ba? says that the evidence of your guilt is not just strong, it is super duper mega strong. Kasi nga, you're already convicted beyond di ba? a reasonable doubt. So, yun ha, don't be... So, pag gano'n ang kaso, pag convicted ka sa mga gano'ng klaseng kaso, Diba? Kahit originally, nakapag-bail ka, hindi na talaga pwede. Now, Section 25, Court Supervision of Detainees, actually, yung mga executive judge, they should really conduct jail visitations. No? Section 26. Uh, it's just a provision stating that um, your um, bail, bawa nagpiyansa ka, pero may objection ka na illegal yung arrest mo or walang tamang or hindi na conduct yung preliminary investigation na dapat may PI hindi porke nang bail ka ibig sabihin you are waiving your objections to your illegal arrest or to the lack of the appropriate or proper uh, preliminary investigation okay so actually that is section 26 I want you to relate Section 26 of Rule 115 to Section 7 of Rule 112, Paragraph 2. Diba? Kasi yung sinabi ko na to kanina, actually, ulitin ko lang. Pag may warrantless arrest, the person arrested under warrantless arrest may ask for PI and waive Article 125. Pero habang nag-apply uh, siya for PI or habang na PPI, the accused no, under warrantless arrest can actually apply for bail. So, in a similar sense, ganun din sa section 26. Okay, nag-file ka nga ng bail, pero anyway, you're presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubting. Eh. So, but may karapatan ka mag-bail. Pero, you know, at the same time, you can object to the illegal arrest. Okay, but make sure, but make sure that um, in Rule 117, Section 9, it must be entered or uh, any irregularity or challenge must be raised before you enter your plea. Okay, because kung hindi mo uh, ma-enter yan before, um, Kung hindi mo na-raise yung objections mo no, to your arrest or to the lack of PI, etc. before plea, at nakapag-arraignment na at nag-plea ka na, yun nga, it, it constitutes waiver. Hindi mo na, waive, waive na yun, hindi mo na siya pwede erase. Of course, may exceptions yun, pero pagdating na lang natin sa Rule 117. Okay? Now, meron akong isang tanong sa isip ko at... Um, Bakit pag yung RTC, yung non-bailable offense, for example, sa final judgment niya, na-convert, no? na-downgrade, naging bailable offense na siya. So, umbawa, um, um, economic sabotage na illegal recruitment yung finance sa RTC. Doon sa desisyon ng korte, simple illegal recruitment na lang. So, from non-bailable, naging available. Pero ang sabi ng rule, pag gano'n ang senaryo, hindi ka pwedeng mag, pwede mag-file ng bail dun sa RTC na yon. Kailangan mo pa-file ka ng bail dun sa taas, sa CA. 
binasa ko na yung Leviste versus CA and yung other ano, parang wala akong makitang reason why. Bakit hindi ka pwedeng mag-file dun sa RPC na yon na nag-downgrade ng offense mo? Dun sa judgment, dun sa decision. Well, I just want to guess na siguro it's just also to safeguard. Na baka siguro may senaryo na kaus... Ay, ay, siguro yung RPC court na yon, di ba? Na baka may collusion of some sort na okay, sige, ida-downgrade ko yung... Uh, case mo, ikaw downgrade ko yung case mo para makapag Tapos mag, sa akin ka na rin mag-file ng bail. Siguro kaya sinabi ng Supreme Court na sa taas ka na magpa-file, hindi dun sa RTC na sa CA. Para talaga ma-review ng CA yung entire records at makita talaga. Pati yung pagda-downgrade, masilip na rin ng CA. Bak di-downgrade yan? At kung di-downgrade yan, qualified ka ba mag-bail o hindi? So, siguro yun lang yung safeguard na nilagay ng Supreme Court. Pag ganun ang senaryo. Kasi usually, pwede kang mag-file ng bail dun sa same court. Kahit nag-file ka na ng notice of appeal, basta hindi pa nako-forward sa CA yung records. Pag na-forward sa CA, sa CA. Pag nasa RTC, sa RTC. Except kung di-downgrade. Pag di-downgrade, higher court, no, yung appellate court ang mag-review niya. Okay? I think I covered all, at least the basic... Um, items regarding Rule 114 tonight. Thank you very much. Once again, good evening.